the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, you're going to learn how to do the seaming and the edging for the Marley Bird crochet along poncho. At this point, you have completed your panel one, which was the raised chevron, your panel two, which was the loopy chevron, and it's time to put those two pieces together. Once they're seamed together, you're going to have this instant gratification moment because your poncho is actually going to begin to take shape. So much so that you can actually try it on. Once you're done with the seaming, you have a choice of which edging you want to use. I have four edgings written out for this particular pattern. You could go simple crab stitch, which is reverse single crochet, a simple shell stitch, or some dreadlocks, or go really dramatic and add some super great fringe. I will walk you through each edging step by step so that you will have no problems completing your poncho. As always, this pattern is free on MarleyBird.com and you can click on the link right down there in the video description below to find the free pattern. While you're down there, please go ahead and smash that like button as my kids say so that everybody knows you enjoyed today's video. I do want to remind you that once this crochet along is complete, a full PDF version of the poncho pattern will be available on redheart.com and I will update the video description below to make sure that you can get to that pattern as well. If you're ready to jump in, so am I. Go ahead and download that pattern and let's get started. this crochet along I've began each section of the crochet along by going through the actual patterns that way you know how to read the pattern as it's written on marleybird.com and I'm going to start this one the same way so take a look down here I've printed off the full pattern directly from the marleybird.com website and you can see right here it starts off just like the other two panels begin we do know that we are in section three and if you need to get to section one there's a hyperlink right there and section two there's also a hyperlink directly on your screen there's always a big image of what it is we are making a direct link to the Ravelry pattern of this particular pattern and there's information down here for all the details that you might need for this poncho I am going to turn the page or for you you could scroll on the screen you'll see up here at the top that it has the specific measurements for each piece of the poncho and the full finished measurements of the poncho each rectangular piece that is the panel that you should already have complete should equal these measurements for everything to work out the way we need it to once we seam the poncho together we'll get the full finished poncho measurements as we follow along, you can see that it says the pattern and if the following instructions pertain to section three. There's a full set of abbreviations and like always, special stitches. Now the special stitches for this particular part of the poncho refer to the dreadlocks, which can be seen on the poncho that I am modeling in the picture from the first page or the crab stitch, which is also known as reverse single crochet, which can be seen on this poncho right behind me made out of stained glass. You follow along and it says let's begin and we jump right into the finishing and it says seaming the pieces together. You will pin the pieces together as shown in the seaming diagram which will be shown on the next page. And you can see right here that I've added a designer note. It says once the pieces are pinned together, you can take a look and see if the poncho is the right size for you. You can even try on your poncho at this point once it's pinned together. Go ahead and slip it on over your head and just see, you know what, is this about the size I want? If you decide that maybe you want it just a little bit bigger, you can choose to add a little bit more length to the panels. I will caution you though that if you do that, that will make your neck area a little bit bigger and it might fall off your shoulders so you want to be careful. You also have a choice of seaming it together as it is and then adding a couple extra rounds on the edging portion so that way you can get some extra length. Maybe the size is perfect up top but you want it a little bit longer. You can do that. There is a full written out explanation of both of those options and what you would do if you were to lengthen the panel right there in the written instructions in front of you. As you follow along, you can see here, this is the diagram I was speaking about earlier about how to connect your work. You have two panels and you'll see here it says the direction of work and it points the raised chevron, this would be your chain edge and you would have it going this way. And for the loopy stitch, you would have your chain edge and have it going this way. Is it vital that you have the direction of work going those two directions? No. If you decide, you know what, I like the way it looks if I flip those around, you can totally do that. It's up to you, okay? So don't get it seamed together and think, oh my gosh, I've got to undo it because I did it incorrectly because they're going the wrong ways. If you like the, the direction you have them pinned out, 
go with it, okay? As we carry on and look here at the diagram, these red portions that are the, the highlighted red portions, that's where this edge of the raised chevron piece is gonna be seamed to this edge of the loopy stitch piece. And same thing, this edge of the loopy piece will be connected to this edge. Now in the second video for the loopy chevron, I did tell you that you could decide to add decorative buttons. And if you choose to do that, you do want to make sure that the direction of your loopy stitch is going this way because your final edge of loops that are up here that you left free to have decorative buttons on, you want those to be connected to the raised chevron piece. You don't want those to be down here at the bottom edge of your work because that's not going to be where you want them to be to add the buttons. So you do want to make sure that your loopy stitches are up here and they are connected right there to the raised chevron piece. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. As you carry on, it says, sew the pieces together along the edges that are highlighted in the red diagram. That's what I just pointed out. And I suggest using a whip stitch. It's really easy. I'm going to show you how to do that in the video today. So don't fret. You'll, you'll have no problem with that. Um, it says, when you match up the loopy edge to the flat edge of the raised chevrons, do not leave a gap. Meaning, we know the loopy edge chevron is somewhat of a chevron, and you might be, um, you might want to kind of still maintain the chevron stitch and leave a little gap as you're joining to the raised chevron, but we don't want that. We want them to come up side by side, right next to each other. And I do add a picture of that to the next page. So if we were to scroll, you can see in this image right here, and hopefully you'll see it better on your screen, that I have the loopy chevron stitch connected right here to the raised chevron stitch, and I did show you where your loose loop edges would be connected if you were doing a decorative button, okay? So that way I wanted to make sure you knew how that worked out. Once your poncho is pinned in place and then seamed, it's gonna look like this. Your poncho, when it's laid out flat, will resemble something like this. If I were to flip this around, I would have this seam edge just exactly the same, only it would be on that side right there. These general measurements are what the measurements of your poncho should be if you reach the same panel measurements as um, indicated at the start of the pattern. Once we get past this point, we move to the bottom edging. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause here and let's go ahead and complete this portion of the pattern and then we'll come back and we'll read about the bottom edging. Go ahead, grab your panels, grab a bent tip tapestry needle and the yarn you used to create your actual panels. If you have some mini knit clips with you to use to pin the pieces together, go ahead and grab those. Or if you're using something else, grab whatever you're going to use to put the pieces together, okay? All right, are you ready? Let's put this poncho together. As you take a look down here, you can see I've already gone ahead and I have matched up my loopy chevron edge to the side of the raised chevron edge. And it's a little bit difficult to look because my, my camera is zoomed in quite a bit, but you can see right here, I have made sure that my loopy edge is not squished together. I wanna make sure I get the width that it's supposed to be for the panel. You'll notice that as you loop those stitches together on the chevron, it wants to kind of squish together a little bit. Make sure you spread it out and then line it up right next to the edge of the raised chevron. And once you've done that, I want you to pin it into place. Now you can see here, I've used these really great mini knit clips and this is what it looks like. They are by Susan Bates. They are so great for all sorts of seaming purposes, whether it's for knitting or crochet, I love them. And what makes them super great is that if you take a look here, there is a prong that comes out between the two bits of the knit clip and this prong actually sticks through the fabric and then there's a hole on the other side that the prong fits into and it holds everything secure. So that way as I'm seaming up my edge here, my edges aren't gonna flip flop around and I'm not gonna have one edge maybe a little bit more cinched in than the other edge because these little bit these little knit clips have held everything in place i find these so handy they are inexpensive i'll put a link right down there in the video notes below so you can go ahead and grab yourself directly from redheart.com these mini knit clips they're great so what i've done here is i took my panel and you can see it's side next to this one so this is my finished edge and i've just pinned it out so i've pinned it all out okay once i've done that 
What I essentially do is I take this, this is gonna be my neck opening right here, everybody. So the length of the raised chevron panel now gets flipped over. Can you see how it's flipped over? And it is connected to the side of the loopy chevron. So I make sure this one is nice and not, I don't wanna say stretched out, it's the measurement that the panel is supposed to be. So it's the same width that the panel is supposed to be. And then I use my knit clips to pin that into place as well. Making sure I don't have any bunched areas, everything is nice and even. So that way when I go to seam this, I won't have any problems from seaming up a row, a row to a stitch right here. It'll seam up really great. Once everything's pinned into place and I open this up, I'm gonna pull this down here and you can see this is my neck opening. Now I did at the very start, I'm gonna unclip this one. I forgot to stretch this one out at first when I, when I pinned it and I had it and it, my op neck opening looked something like that. It was really peculiar. I was like, oh no, something's wrong. And that's where I was like, okay, I just need to stretch this out to make sure that this neck opening is the same so that it's the same on both sides. And it's just the nature of the loopy chevron stitch that it wants to pull a little bit. The point, the center point part of your poncho does not have to be center on your body. It can actually be to the side and have a little bit more artistic and asymmetrical look. You can't really tell on the pictures that I modeled because I have the really pretty cowl on the tealberry poncho, but it is not centered on me as well. I had it tilted to the side a little bit so that way my, ed my edge that my arm is coming out was a little bit shorter than this edge. I like the way it looked. As long as you're getting the main shape that we want, that's important. The other thing that's important is that your head can actually get through that neck opening. So you wanna make sure that you're not seaming it so close that your neck, your head can't get through the neck opening. That would not be good. So this is how the initial pinning should be. Once everything is pinned into place, you do want to start with your whip stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a length of yarn that I think is long enough to get through the entire length of the side I'm going to seam and thread it onto my bent tip tapestry needle. I'm gonna scooch this up because I'm gonna start down here at the edge. So I'm down here at the bottom edge. I'm gonna grab my bent tip tapestry needle. And once again, I highly recommend using bent tip tapestry needles when you're doing any seaming. It just makes things so much easier, you guys, um, versus a plastic needle. Getting through the stitches, it just makes things super easy. So I'm gonna grab a length of yarn here. And I am using the same color yarn as I used on the poncho because I don't want it to show, right? I want it to still to look pretty good. So I have my yarn, I went ahead and I threaded it onto my bent tip tapestry needle. I'm gonna start down here at the bottom edge and I have to join my yarn. So I'm gonna join with a figure eight. I'm gonna pop in to this side of the fabric. I'm just gonna go in and pull it up. I'll make sure I leave a nice little tail there that I can weave in later. Come over to the corresponding side, other side of the panel and pull up. And then I come back over here where I came in to begin and pop that up. And what this is going to do is it's going to make a figure eight. Now with the Red Heart Unforgettable yarn, I do wanna remind you that this is a single ply yarn and if you pull too tightly or too snug, you will break this yarn. So if you wanted to do this doubled up, like have two strands of yarn to seam it together, you absolutely could, it's totally up to you. But I do wanna caution you that you wanna be careful as you're pulling that you don't tug it too much, okay? Once I've done that, all I'm gonna do here is making sure that my work over here on this panel and this panel, it's not gonna get bunched up by the time I get to that next clip. I'm going to start whip stitching these together. Go into one side and out the other. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go into this side and pop over here. And this is as easy as it gets, you guys, just whip stitching these two pieces together because it's gonna pull them together and you're not gonna get any sort of a ridge or an edge as long as you make sure your two panels don't get bunched up from one side to the other. Okay, so I'm just going from one edge, popping it out to the other edge. Sorry, my nose itches there for a second. I don't wanna create a knot, so I wanna make sure I don't get a knot and I'm pulling it all the way up, popping over here and coming out this side. 
and you'll see here as it's going it's just bringing this panel here directly next to this panel and it looks virtually seamless. Now right here, this is where I'm talking about the Chevron panel. I could, if I wanted to, make that you know nice and open because that is a Chevron stitch there, correct? But I don't want that. I want those to be bunched right up next to each other. So I wanna make sure that I am working my seaming so that they are right next to each other and I don't have a gap. Pretty simple, right? And I'm not paying attention to how many stitches I am seaming, you know, up to my, my next marker right here, because for me, all I really want here is I just want it to be pretty. I just want to make sure that as everything comes together, there is no bunching and everything looks good. I will continue seaming this up to the top of my poncho, which is the neckline. And I'm going to bring you back in when I get up to that point. I am up here to the last bit of my seaming and you can see I just removed my knit clip and I am going to continue on and when I get up here to the last portion I will finish off just like I began. So I will do a figure eight once again just to secure it and then I will seam or not seam I will weave my ends into place on the inside of the poncho. So there's my figure eight, give it a nice pull, just like that. And I'm going to pop my extra yarn here to the inside. And I can turn this around and just weave in my ends. And to secure it, it's nice to go down the path that you had originally come in and then come back up, make sure you are picking up in a, just as close as you can to the path you just went down, but right next to it going the other direction, making sure you're not going to the opposite side of your work, and then go back once more. If you do this, it will secure your yarn nice and tight, and you won't have any problems with it coming undone. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and snip that nice and close, and we can take a look here real quick this part of my poncho is seamed together. Right here, my nice loop edge is connected to my chevron edge. If I wanted this to be connected over here with a decorative stitch, that's where this loop here would have crossed over, or not decorative stitch, a decorative button. This loop here would have crossed over and I could put a button there, but I didn't want that on this particular poncho. I originally had thought about it, but now I, I changed my mind as I was creating the poncho. So now that this side is all seamed, I'm ready to seam the other side, which is the edge of the, sh the raised chevron to the edge of the loopy chevron. So I will begin that side just like I started last time with my figure eight stitch and working up towards the neck opening. Now, because I have been using this strand to pull through all those stitches on the opposite side, I'm gonna go ahead and even though I have a strand that's long enough to go the length, I'm gonna toss this aside and start with the new one just so that I can make sure it doesn't accidentally break on me as I'm working along. So let's go ahead, join with your figure eight, seam the other side of your poncho, and then let's take a look. Whew, that wasn't so bad, was it? Seaming up the edges of the poncho should not be a difficult task if you just do the whip stitch. Hopefully you found it relatively easy and you have a poncho now that looks like it's semi-complete, right? Here is mine. You can see here, this is my um, portion of the loopy chevron that connects to the raised chevron. And then on the opposite side, if I were to flip it around, you can see the full uh, raised, or the, sorry, the full loopy compared to the uh, raised chevron where it connects to it. Um, gosh, that's pretty, it just makes me so happy. And now it's time to move on to the edging. So I'm gonna pull in my written instructions again and we can look through those. The last time we looked at these instructions, this is the page that we left off. And you can see down here, it says the bottom edging. And the time has come for you to decide what type of edging you're gonna do on your poncho. This is really a chance for you to make the poncho your own and really customize it to fit you and your needs.
You can see right here at the top, I go on to say that the pacha will be perfect for you and you have a decision to make as far as which edging you wanna make in the round on the bottom of the poncho. You have four options. You could do the simple no fringe crab stitch edging. And that is actually really simple. You don't have to have a particular stitch multiple around. The biggest thing there is that you just wanna make sure you have stitches worked around the edge of the poncho that are um, as even as possible and make the poncho lay as flat as possible. Then you can move on and you could do the simple shell edge, which is what I'm going to do on my cappuccino poncho right here. And on this one, I do have to end up with a multiple of eight overall, meaning if I try and make sure that I have a multiple of four on one side and four on the other side, which both include the corner pieces, I will have an overall multiple of eight and that's what I need to complete the shell. And that is what's super important when you do the shell portion of the edging. Now, is it one of those things that if you get to the end and you're short one or two stitches because you miscounted that you have to rip out? Totally not. This is crochet. It's very forgiving. You can go ahead and make do, just skip a couple stitches here or there and come up to make sure that the shells look as even as possible. Nobody is ever gonna know if you came up short one or two stitches. So I say that so that way you don't rip out your work thinking, oh, I gotta start all over and have it be perfect. You, you don't. Just really strive to have the eight stitch multiple all the way around and you won't have any issues. But if not, if you can fudge it just a little bit, you'll be all right. As I pass on, turn the page, you can see the next one is called the Dreadlock Fringe Edge. And that's the one that I used right here on the Tilbury Poncho. And this Dreadlock Edge, let's see here. Let's actually pull it in, what do you say? I'm gonna pull in the Dreadlock Edge you can see the dreadlock edge right here. It looks like pulled out little dreadlocks and that's made as you work along, you'll pull a length of yarn and twist it and bring it back up and then work the, the yarn together with the next stitch and you get these really great dreadlocks. Now what I love about these, and it's really obvious on the image, is that with this long color changing yarn, even your dreadlocks look like they change colors along the way. And I think that just looks, just looks really super pretty. Don't you think it looks pretty? So that's the dreadlock fringe. And then finally, the last fringe option is the dramatic fringe. And I will caution you first off that if you're making the dramatic fringe with Red Heart Unforgettable, that means that your poncho is no longer machine washable. The reason is the fringe that is real dramatic, which you can see on this blue one behind me, that one there, once you've used the unforgettable yarn in that matter for that fringe, it will mat up if you put it in a washing machine. So then if you use that, your poncho is now hand wash only. So that is the first little, uh, hey, make sure you pay attention here if you want this to be machine washable. This is not the fringe you wanna use. But what's great about that one is it's extremely dramatic, it's very flouncy, and it is completely on trend. So if you wanna use that fringe, there are also instructions for that. The biggest thing with that one is you need an even number of stitches, um, so that way it will work out overall. The same thing goes for the dreadlock fringe. You wanna make sure you have an even number of stitches. So those are the four different edgings that you have to choose from. And then of course, as you go on in the instructions, you have the video and the homework instructions for the crochet along if that's what you wanna do. What I would like to do now is show you guys a little trick that I use whenever I add edging to anything. I like to divide up the edge that I am adding an edging to into sections. So that way I can easily make sure that I have X number of stitches in one section, X number of stitches in another section. And it helps me to maintain whatever stitch multiple I happen to need. So for that, I am going to use these little mini knit clips once again, and I'll show you how I divide up the edge of the poncho before I jump in with my edging. Okay, let's do that now. You can see I have the poncho right here in front of me and I'm pulling it down so that way I have the edge here facing me. Obviously you can see right here is where the loopy edge joined the, the raised chevron. And if I fold this over just ever so slightly, you can see here, here is my corner. So this corner here is what would drape in the front or in the back as I'm wearing the piece. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and divide up the entire length of my poncho right here, okay? And I'm gonna do that simply 
by folding the sections. And I know that it's gonna be a little bit difficult here at the beginning, so what I'm gonna do is I am taking the edges so this is my corner edge right here, and this is like where it's a folded edge, where the two pieces kind of meet. And I'm bringing them up. Let's see here. Once I do that, I have this point. So at that point, I will take a knit clip, and this doesn't have to be exact, and I'm just gonna put it into one edge, and I'm gonna take another knit clip and put it on the opposite edge, right? So now I have two starting points. So once I've done that, I unfold it. Now I have, this is roughly the center point on both sides of this poncho. Can you see that? So now I want to get the halfway point between my corner here and my center point. So what I will do is I will fold that in half and do the same type of thing. Grab another knit clip, put it into one half. Once again, this does not have to be exact. It's just a rough estimate and put another knit clip on the other half. So when I open up, now I have another point of reference. So that way I have a distance I can maintain from the corner to here on the opposite side, from the corner to here. And then from that point to that point, that point to that point, and I wanna do the same at this end. So if I fold this in half, I wanna make sure that I do get my nice stretch on my loopy chevron, because it will tend to pull up on you. So I'm gonna go there and there. Use my little knit clips. Aren't these handy? I use these so much for just so many different things. And clip that there. So now I have points of reference here. I will go ahead and I'm gonna add a knit clip up here right in the center where I did the fold, just so that I have another point of reference, okay? I'm not gonna add one down here at this corner where I have this corner, and the reason I'm not doing that is it's a corner. <laughs> I know exactly where that is. Once I've done that, I have now sectioned this off so that I have one, two, three, four sections on one side and four sections on the other side. Well, remember, my stitch counts for many of the pieces need to be an even number. Great, as long as I have an even number in each one of those sections, I will be good, correct? And then I have other stitch counts for different edgings that need a multiple of four or a multiple of eight. So I can divide up the number of stitches I do in these sections, and as long as I keep within the multiples that I have, I won't ever run out of stitches or have the wrong stitch count. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. I am, I am hesitant to give you an exact number of stitches that you need to put in between each one of these. And the reason is I want you, as you're going to do your edging, to make sure that you're adding your edging so that way the stitches themselves are not puckering up or they aren't over expanding. Like I want you to be able to use your own, um, your own judgment for that. So I'm not gonna give you exact numbers, but I think that this is a great way for you to be able to maintain the stitch count you need to do. Now, once you've done it to this side, you do also need to do it to the other side of the poncho. Remember, there's two sides. So I have already gone ahead and do, done that. So I'm going to just flip it so you can see here. And I have one marker up here at the corner. Let's see, I'm going to place a marker right here. I took it out earlier. And so that one is directly at the halfway point of that one. Here's these two right here. They're evened up these two right there, and then there's my corner once again. So now, as I hold this up in front of me, let me show you. I'm gonna just fold it and hold it up. Can you see all the different markers? See all the markers? So as long as I do my edging and keep the right count between those markers, I'll be on track. Yay, don't you love little tricks like that? Okay, so let's do our edging. One thing that's really great about the edging for this poncho is that all four edgings begin the same way through round two. Yes, the stitch multiples might be different for a few of them, but you're gonna work the same stitches all the way around through round two. As you look down here, you can see that I have the corner of the poncho facing me, and here's the opposite corner right there. And you will do a series of half double crochets 
all the way along the edge of the poncho that we've already pinned up. And when I say all the way along the edge, I mean all the way along the edge. So that you're gonna go up and around and then come back down until you get back to the opposite corner. Once you do that, you will begin to work along this side of the poncho all the way up and around and back around. So you will be doing full rounds of the whole poncho with half double crochets for two rounds. Now remember, you do have to do specific stitch multiples for a couple of the edgings, which is why we pinned out the different sections, okay? But we're gonna start them all off the same way. So right here, I have the loopy uh, chevron panel facing me. It doesn't matter which side you have facing you, whether it's the loopy chevron or the ray chevron, just pick one. And I'm going to begin working into the left side of the center. So left side of the corner, and I'm gonna join with a slip stitch. So let me grab my yarn here. I will join with the slip stitch to the left side of the corner. So I'm just going in and I will join with a slip stitch. Now I will chain two. This does not count as a stitch now and throughout. And I will begin to work a half double crochet as evenly as possible till I get to the next corner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna half double crochet as even as possible to this point. And I wanna end up with an even number. So there's one, and I'm just going in right along the edge here, working my half double crochets. And as I do this, I am not exactly paying attention to where I put my half double crochet as in, am I doing one half double crochet at the end of the row, two half double crochets, I don't really even care. All I know is as I go along, I wanna make sure that this is as evenly spaced as possible and not puckering up. If I have to squeeze a couple more half double crochets in to make it um, a little less puckery, then great, I will do that. So I am not really paying attention to a specific count as far as however many I'm putting over here other than I will want a even number. So I'm gonna And then we're gonna lay this out here in just a second to kind of see what we have. Make sure we have an even number. Let's see, so I lay this down, I can see that it's laying nice and flat. It's laying nice and flat, but let's see if I have an even number. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 26. Perfect, so I have 26 stitches there, and I know that if I move this, I could get a couple more. So I'm just gonna move that, and I'm gonna do two more, so that way I get 28. So there's 27 and 28, and then here's what I like to do. So that way I have a point of reference to go back to. I'm literally just putting my little marker through that last stitch. That's it. And so what that does is it lets me know that when I, if I needed to rip back from this marker to this marker, I have a point of reference. And now I carry on. So I can go on and do an even number past that marker. So there's one, and I carry on, so on and so forth. Now for me, I wanna make sure that I have a multiple of four stitches, including my three stitches at the corner by the time I'm done with this whole edge. And then I wanna make sure I have a multiple of four stitches, including my three stitches at the corner on my next edge, so that way I have a multiple of eight to begin my shell stitches. If you are doing one of the other edgings, make sure that you're using the stitch multiple that you need, and go ahead and carry on getting through this entire round of half double crochet Okay, let's kill. Let's let's keep going. All right, I just got around the first round and I just finished marking my corner center corner stitches so that way I know where to work to. And I'm getting ready to join with a slip stitch to the first half double crochet I completed. So I just did that. Now I do not want to turn my work and go the opposite direction. I'm going to continue working the same path, so to speak, and I am going to do half double crochets on top of all the half double crochets I've already completed. 
At this point, it's a good opportunity as you're working along to do another count. So as you're working along, make a stitch count and make sure that you do have the correct stitch multiple that you need for the edging that you're completing. I'm gonna go ahead, finish this edging, and then we're gonna take a look at all the different edgings and complete each one individually so that way you know how to do the crab stitch, the shell stitch, the dreadlock fringe, and the dramatic fringe. So let me get through this round. You made it all the way around the poncho two times and it's time to move forward to the next round of your edging. By this point, you do have the correct stitch multiple for whichever edging you wanna complete and it's just time to get started. I think it's best if I walk you through each one of the edgings and I'm gonna put the sample right here on this, this poncho that I have. So we'll have a nice sampling of edgings by the time this little um, demonstration is complete, but then I will only do the shell stitches on the poncho when it's all said and done. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in and learn how to do the crab stitch. My yarn is still attached to my poncho and I am going to move forward and begin my round three of the simple no fringe crab stitch. You begin with a chain one and then working backwards, we're gonna reverse single crochet into this direction. So working backwards, I take my hook and I go into the stitch behind the stitch that I just completed, yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, draw through two. Go into the next stitch behind, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Go to the next stitch behind, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. The next stitch behind, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. The next stitch behind, Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. What you're gonna notice is that you begin to get a really cool corded ridge kind of look right there. And if you do that all the way around the poncho, you get a really simple edging. It's not a bunch of frills, but it is a really beautiful finish. It looks like a nice rope finish. Now you know how to do the reverse single crochet. Let's learn how to do the shell stitch. For the shell stitch, go ahead and get back to the beginning where you did your join. Now I will do a chain one and following along round three of the simple shell edge, I will do a single crochet into the next stitch. I will skip three stitches. So skip one, two, three, and working into the next stitch, I'm going to put nine treble crochets. So I yarn over my hook twice, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Do that again, so yarn over my hook twice, go into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, Yarn over, draw through two. I have to do this for a total of nine treble crochets. Once you get nine triple crochets, you carry on with the pattern. You skip three stitches, do a single crochet in the next stitch, and then carry on. Skip three stitches and put nine treble crochets in the next stitch. Let me complete the second shell and then we'll take a look at what it looks like. Once you finish nine treble crochets, once again, you would skip three stitches and then you are back to your repeat. So the repeat is from star, and the star begins at single crochet, so it's skip three, that's the end of our repeat, and our repeat begins with a single crochet. So I'm gonna pause right there and set this down, and let's take a look. 
you can see here that the treble crochets, by doing nine of them all the way around, the height of the treble crochet makes up for the three skipped chains that we do there and on either side of the single crochet. And so we get a really great shell look. And all you would do is follow the repeat. So the repeat begins with the single crochet, skip three, nine trebles, skip three, and then repeat. So then it would be single crochet, skip three, nine trebles, skip three. Make sense? If you've done the stitch multiple correct around the entire poncho, you will end up with the skip three and then you will join with a slip stitch into the first single crochet you completed in the round and you will finish off your work. Now you know how to do the shell stitch. Let's move on and learn how to do the dreadlock fringe. For dreadlock fringe, we're beginning on round three. So we start off with a chain one and single crochet in the next stitch. Now we have to complete the make dreadlock. So what we will do is go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. What I want you to do from here is you will extend this loop at least eight inches long or longer. You can make these dreadlocks as long as you want them to be. Once you've extended it, Begin to twist the dreadlock clockwise. Just twist it around just like so. And as you're twisting it, it will become very tight and the yarn will begin to fold back on itself at the center point. Once it's as tight as you want it to be, you will take the loop right here and you'll place it back on your hook. So here I am coming back over here and I'm gonna place it back on my hook. And if you watch this, it's all gonna cinch up on itself. See how that cinches up on itself? You get that really cool dreadlock. Oh, that's so cute. Once you've done that, you will go back into the same stitch that you originally went into, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the two loops that are on your hook. So it's almost as if you just did a slip stitch. Now you will single crochet in the next stitch and you'll do a dreadlock in the next one. So yarn, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. You're gonna extend this loop. You wanna be the same distance as you were with the other loop as much as possible, and then twist once again. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. And you can twist this as tight or as loose as you want it to be. I like the way it looks when they're nice and tight. It does take some time, but I promise you this is worth it. This is so cute. Once you get it as tight as you want it to be, put it back on your hook. You can see here I'm putting it back on my hook. And here's the cool part. This is going to twist on itself. See how that twists on itself? It's so cool. That is just so cool. I'm going to make sure it goes all the way down. Perfect. Go back into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that yarn over through the two loops that are on your hook single crochet in the next stitch. Go into the next stitch and you will repeat this all the way around. So I would go in, pull up a loop, it's about the same length, and twist. Let's do this one more time, just because they're so good looking. They do take a lot of time, but man, are they cute. All the way around, twist, 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 twist. It'll fold at about the center point see here fold oh isn't that cool gosh that's so cool go back into the same stitch yarn over pull up a loop and then draw through the two loops that are on your hook once this is done you'll have all of these really great dreadlocks if I'm being honest this is my favorite fringe this is so cool I think the poncho looks fantastic with that fringe only one fringe left, and you know how to do this, I'm pretty sure. All we're gonna do is we are gonna cut lengths of yarn and add them to our project. So let's go ahead and do that now. As you take a look down here, I'm bringing in just some basic Red Heart Soft yarn, and I'm gonna cut lengths of yarn that are about 12 inches long. And the reason I want about 12 inches is because I really like the dramatic look of having that folded in half and having about six inches of length on the poncho. I think it looks really pretty. So I'm gonna say that's about 12 inches long. I'm gonna use my scissors and cut the length of yarn. Go ahead and do that once again. 
cut the length of yarn, and then one more time. You want three strands for each, each piece of fringe. Now, I am gonna go ahead and cut one more length of yarn so that I have my standard length that I am going for, okay? So there we are, I have three plus one that I can do for the next round. I have my three lengths of yarn and I am going to fold them in half, just like so, so that they're folded in half. And with the wrong side of the poncho facing me, I want the wrong side facing me, I will pick a point in the poncho. So if we were starting down here at the bottom, I would just pick a point, I would go into a stitch, grab that halfway point of the fringe that I would want to add, and pull that through. Once I pull that through, I simply took my fingers, take my fingers, go inside that loop, grab the tails of the fringe, and pull. When I do that, see how it leaves the really pretty midway point of the fringe on the right side of my fabric, and I get some really great length of the fringe. I would carry on, get my sample length going, and I would cut three more strands of yarn. Here I am, I've cut my four lengths of yarn. I'm gonna pull my one aside, that's my, my sample. And I will fold these strands of yarn in half. And with the wrong side of the poncho facing me, I will skip one stitch and going into the next stitch, add my fringe just like I did before. Once I've pulled that through, open up the halfway point, pull the tails, pop them through, and give them a nice tug and you have some more fringe. Now once all the fringe is complete, you can go and trim this up and make it all even if you want, or if you like how it's a little bit shaggy, you can absolutely leave it like that as well. But that is how you add the dramatic fringe. I will remind you once again that if you are using the Red Heart Unforgettable yarn for your fringe, you have made this poncho so that it is no longer machine washable. You will want to hand wash it. Otherwise, the fringe portion will get all matted up. So you have to be very careful with that. But other than that, this fringe is so on trend right now. People love it. And it is so spicy and saucy and sassy. Like it's one of those things where if you're wearing your poncho down the street with this kind of a fringe, everybody's gonna be looking at you and be like, wow, aren't you just something hot? How does it feel? Your poncho is really starting to take shape. You've seamed it together and you've added a really wonderful edging only thing left is the neckline, the neck finish. And so that's what we will do in section four. Please go ahead, finish your homework this week, which is just seaming and doing your edging. Set it aside and be ready for next week's instructions for the neckline. You get to decide if you want to do just a basic trim of crab stitch, if you want to pick up stitches and do a turtleneck, if you want to do a simple cowl neck or a dramatic cowl neck. There are lots of options for you and I'm excited to show you how to do it. I am so proud of all of you out there who are completing this crochet along project. It is seriously, it super delights me whenever I see you finishing your work, showing your panel, showing your poncho, showing your finished progress. It is, it's just really great. It's, it's so exciting and so gratifying for me. Make sure that if you do share pictures of your poncho online, use the hashtag MarleyBirdCal and I can uh, find your pictures without any hesitation. And those of you out there who want to check out some other people's ponchos, you can search up MarleyBirdCal and find some great stuff there. Don't forget that there is a Facebook group for this crochet along and it will be available throughout the entire crochet along and beyond. This Facebook group is one that I use for all of the Marley Bird crochet along. So whether you are participating in this crochet along right now, or if this one is complete and we've started another one, come and join the group, come and join the fun. There's lots of wonderful people in there who offer support and suggestions and just great advice. And it's just, it's a good place to be. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you'll come back here for more. Be sure to hit subscribe so you're up to date whenever there's a new video released. And as always, smash that like button as my kids say. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and this is the Marley Bird Crochet Along Poncho. I'll see you next week. Bye. Looking for more Marley Bird? Don't worry, I've got you covered. Click right down there and you will find more videos just like this teaching you how to knit or crochet, all brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. Go ahead, click away. Don't be shy. Don't forget to smash that like button.